I'm going to build today on the eye-opening landscape that Nina began to paint for you. And I'm going to speak directly to what I think was up with us as humanity and how it specifically manifests in the hearts, minds, and souls of young women. And this talk is going to be in English, Ebonics, and hip-hop vernacular, because I am fluent in all three. <laughs> So who's got next, or as we say in hip hop, who got next? If you had told me 15 years ago that I would be standing here, I would not have believed you. As the first in my family to enter the corporate ranks of America's Fortune 50 company, companies, I had every intention of shattering the glass ceiling, making a whole lot of money, rescuing my peeps from cyclical poverty consciousness and riding off into the sunset. But the universe had other plans for me. And so here I stand almost 15 years later to the day, and I wonder how my life could have ever been about anything else other than the celebration, empowerment, healing, and transformation of humanity through the upliftment of the hearts, minds, and souls of young women. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't get it twisted. I came kicking and screaming. <laughs> Why? Because there is not a day that I do not get tired thinking about how much work we have to do. And believe me, I know. As a black woman born into a country that would have thrown me away and written me off long before I ever, ever drew breath, I know that there is not a day, and there is not a day that I'm reminded of this dismissal. I know that we got issues. I know this. But the fact that I was born into a country that would have and has written me off, and the fact that there is not a day that I don't get reminded of this dismissal has nothing to do with me. I want to say that again. It has nothing to do with me. Because it is not up to America whether or not I live or die. And it is not up to the so-called leadership of this nation whether or not I thrive or prosper. And the moment that I decide that the struggle is about validation, recognition, and entitlement, I give up my power. And like I said before, all that ain't got nothing to do with me. And it has nothing to do with my sisters. Often I am asked about our work and what it is exactly that we do. And you know, the words have been a long time coming. But I think the best way I can describe it in this moment is to say that the mission of the next wave of women in power and our first initiative, We Got Issues, is to hold powerful space so that, number one, women can get still and hear what is calling them. Number two, so that women can think strategically and holistically about how to answer that call. And number three, to help young women cleanse, heal, purge, and disengage from anything that stands in the way of fulfilling all of the above. Right. We at Next Wave are in the business of travel. And the journey is from victim to vision and we be transporting souls on the underground like Harriet to freedom. You know, as Nina read those dismal statistics, I could not help but nod my head. The culture of this society works overtime to cultivate and nurture insecurity, and young women have proven to be easy prey. 
America has given its daughters an identity crisis, an inferiority complex, a preoccupation with unattainable perfection that leaves many of them, many of us, silenced in the wake of not being anything enough. Yes, we got issues. Unlike our male counterparts who act out in retaliation, we as women tend to act in and self-destruct through physical and emotional neglect, dysfunctional eating habits, and toxic relationships. We at Next Wave have found that these issues cut across race, class, ethnicity, and geographical location. Hence, our commitment to all young women between the ages of 18 and 35. I want to assert this morning that I believe the most crucial game that each of us can play to bring about transformation in the social, political, and environment movement is the game called Go Within. We at Next Wave have come to know that it is the most vital journey young women in America can take right now. And as members of this global community, we must consider the restoring of our spiritual gardens just as necessary and important to the social political movement as rallying in the streets and registering to vote. We cannot demand rights that we do not believe deep down inside we are entitled to and expect to receive them. Moreover, the minute that we decide that our right to life and ability to be empowered are up to someone else, we have orchestrated a losing battle. Next Wave women know that the next revolution is about responsibility and accountability to ourselves and to our universal family. And the responsibility begins with honoring who we really are and bringing what we have been called to bring. If the experience of Katrina has taught us anything at all, it is that this is our America. And we can no longer afford to stand by while those who are in charge figure out whether or not they can fix it. As we take responsibility for who we are, we are able to reclaim our rightful place as citizens and work to restore the possibility of fulfilling the dream of a true democracy. So my answer to the question, who got next, is we do. So what of this hip hop era? And where do we stand in relationship to the feminist movement? I mean, since we are in the age of capitalistic market branding and nonprofits are not exempt, holla. <laughs> holla if you hear me. How is our brand and our movement different? As we watch little Kim aspire to be the next Martha Stewart, AKA jailhouse diva, Holla. We get to bear witness to the affliction of striving for fabulousness as the latest distorted outgrowth of the feminist movement. You go girl, gone awry, <laughs> has turned a once inspiring mantra for personal achievement into a fiercely competitive landscape that perpetuates gross gender inequality in leadership and leaves most of us overextended, out of touch, and frankly, out of breath. Many of this generation's daughters are in over their heads and living way over their edge because we are driven by the overburdening need to have it all, be it all, and do it all in half the time. What this creates is a scattered sense of being, a perpetual state of confusion and dissatisfaction, hamster wheel disorientation, and very little progress. We are so busy and dizzy, 
running around trying to prove we are up to and about to something, that at the end of the day, when I ask most young women the question, where you at, really, they are hard pressed to find an answer. We are not grounded. And when we are not grounded, we say yes to things and have no idea why, and then become a slave to these obligations that ultimately put us last on the list. Next wave women know that sometimes opportunity is really distraction in a very fly dress. And we must treat it like crack and just say no. <laughs> Focus is our friend, ladies. Multitasking is just a great marketing scheme that has you feel fabulous while you run around with your tongue hanging out. <laughs> this distorted epidemic has flung us way out of balance. And what we have seen in Next Wave is a fundamental crisis in our ability as women to know ourselves beyond what we do and give to others. And what this has created is a fundamental breakdown in our ability to get still, listen, and receive. Next Wave women understand universal flow and know that it is through the grounding of vision, purpose, and the growing edge that we are able to discern what is divinely for us. Right person, right knowledge, right timing. Right me, right medium, right now. Yes, we got issues. You might want to hold on to your chair now. <laughs> Another distorted outgrowth of this feminist movement is the belief that our feminine gender automatically makes us more compassionate, understanding, and inclusively nurturing in leadership. This is a myth. We have swam in the same contaminated water as our male counterparts, and therefore must do the same deep excavation work in order to bring such attributes to bear. A skirt in the chair does not guarantee you anything. We cannot take our womanhood for granted, nor can we assume that we have been immune to the constant conditioning and corrupting messages in this society that define success and power. Next wave women know that we must challenge these existing notions as a daily practice, and we must think long and hard about who we aspire to be and how we would like that reflected in our leadership. We must be willing to get still and come face to face with our shadow selves, get to know our demons real well, so that we can bring awareness to when we are in vision and when we are just straight up tripping. <laughs> Please do not misunderstand me. I am deeply thankful for the opportunity as a woman to think, live, and dream from an expansive place. And I know that the mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers of the feminist movement made that possible. Please. But I would be remiss as a black woman if I did not speak the truth about the great race, age, and class divides that continue to permeate throughout this modern woman's movement. Somehow, despite our best efforts, we continue to have our activism and our representation be disproportionately related to those who can afford to financially underwrite the cause. And that just leaves too many of us on the outside looking in, or at the mercy of others' benevolence for survival. As Next Wave women, we commit to self-determination and working across the culture, race, and class as a deliberate testimony to the power of collaboration among the underserved and the underengaged. And you would be surprised to find who fits underneath those headings. We work eyeball to eyeball, mentoring, nurturing, and challenging one another from a place of deep love, esteem, and investment, not like rescuing 
nor charity, nor guilt-ridden obligation, but more like universal sisterhood in the making. Yes, we got issues. And like I said, we got lots of work to do, and goddess knows I do get tired just thinking about it. <laughs> because what it takes to play this internal game most days is all I got. But I trust in a very deep place that as I fortify my soul and my spirit, and as we fortify our souls and our spirit, that the universe will line up beside us and we will be given everything we need to go the distance. After all, what we are calling the state of our world is simply a reflection and a projection of our internal afflictions being played out. Next Wave women understand this, and we dedicate ourselves to sustainability, and we hold our centers like we hold each other, and together we hold the planet, rocking the world back into balance, humbly and sacredly, one soul, one voice, one woman at a time.